Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning, my name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. And uh, this morning we're celebrating Senior Sunday. And Senior Sunday, we're gonna interview some of the seniors and hear a little bit about them and Christ in their lives. And we're here with McKenna Rowlett and with Morgan Harrison and gonna chat with them just a little bit to talk about their faith walk. And uh, Morgan, tell me a little bit about your, your relationship with Christ and your faith walk here at Roswell. Um, so I've grown up here my entire life. I got baptized when I was like six months old, did Kid Zone, WOW, VBS, everything every year, went to preschool here. And then I remember I got to go to something for the youth, like when I was in fifth grade, because my mom was helping out and thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. I can't wait to go to that <laughs> next year. Started youth, sixth grade. It kind of started clicking for me of what it meant to have a deeper relationship um, as we're taught in youth versus what we're taught, obviously, when we're younger. And then it like really clicked for me more during confirmation, and that's when I accepted Christ into my life. Um, I've been blessed to have an amazing small group that we're both a part of, um, senior girls. And that's also been a big part is having really important leaders in my life and yes. just a really close, tight knit group of girls that we can all Who come together. Who are your senior leaders in your? Maggie um, Rogers and Rebecca Hart. Okay. That felt weird to say. So how long have, yeah, she mm -hmm. got married and yeah. changed her name. Yeah. yeah. How long were you in that group? Um, I've been in it since sixth grade. Oh my. But it, Rebecca has been with us for like three or four years and Maggie's been with us, I think since seventh or eighth grade. I guess you all have gotten close, haven't you? Very close, yeah. Well, you said sixth grade, your relationship with Christ began to, to change some. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. I think it just started to deepen as I was exploring more of a new type of worship and getting to have deeper conversations. And that was the first time that I had had more of a small group that I met consistently with every week. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... Not only were you starting to make deeper connections with leaders, but also people, because you were, by the time you got to youth, you were around more people who cared about being there. So I think that was just really impactful. Yeah. Was there a specific area in, that you plugged into that meant a lot to you in your life and in your faith development? Um, besides all the youth stuff, something that's always been really important to me is the kids ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, throughout all the years for the longest time, pretty much all of middle school up until COVID, I was doing like the praise and worship team on Sunday mornings. Yeah. And then last summer I got plugged in again um, and got to intern for Sabrina and Bailey, which I'm doing in this summer and I'm very yeah. excited. Um, but that's been a huge part is serving to the kids and getting to connect with them as well. Well, what about next steps? Where, after high school, what? Um, so next year I'm going to East Tennessee State University okay. and I'm majoring in nutrition and I'm going to try to look around and find a college ministry but I also really want to get plugged in maybe somewhere just in the city with like a kids ministry because not only have I worked with kids here I also work with kids like at an after school program so I just love being around kids and stuff so I would love to find something to do with them as well. That'd be great yeah, getting that small group and some place to mm -hmm. plug in particular. Yeah. Well McKenna tell me about your faith walk here at Roswell. 
So I started coming here when I was four. Mm -hmm. um, I have basically gone through like the youth since then. Always come every Sunday, yada yada. Um, <clears throat> I accepted Christ uh, during a middle school camp in sixth grade, and then, uh, which was you know great. Um, it didn't really, I guess, hit me in a sense of kind of what that meant until COVID hit. Yeah. And then we like stopped coming to church, and then I was like, oh, maybe I need to like rethink this whole thing, and so then. I went to AYL once COVID started letting up and the speaker there was amazing and I reaffirmed my faith and I was like, this is something I need in my life. And it like, I guess I deepened my faith mm -hmm. and realizing that he's like always there and he loves us. Yeah. What year was that? Or at least year in mm. school for you? I would have been a sophomore, I want to say. Okay. Yes. Well, as far as different areas of the church, where all have you plugged in and what has meant the most to you? Um, I think for me, the thing I've plugged in the most in and also means the most to me is missions. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like I've helped out with like Must Ministries. I've um, done like uh, confirmation. I was an ex-con. Yeah. I, I loved my group. I was in a group with Tyler, so... Well, <laughs> there are folks out there who may not know what an ex-con is. They might think you serve time. So tell me a little bit about, or tell them a little bit about what ex-con is yes. and what they do. So an ex-con is somebody who has already gone through confirmation and they basically come back and they teach the sixth graders or yeah, sixth and seventh graders, uh, basically the same lessons that you learned when you were a confirmand, but then you put your own like life lessons and values that you've learned about those lessons and you kind of like teach that to the kids. Was that helpful for you the second time oh, around? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was it was really cool to like um teach that like to teach them but then be like, "Oh, well I have like real life experience that I can like actually teach these kids to be like, "Hey, look. This is like like modern day stuff." Yeah. Yeah. You had also mentioned must. There are mm -hmm. folks out there who may not know what you're talking about. So Must Ministries is an organization that, at least when I used to help out, was they would make sandwiches um, and feed kids over the summer that can't like afford to get food and normally re ugh, rely on lunch, um, for, on school lunch during the school years, but then over the summers and during breaks, they don't have that. So then Must Ministries goes out and hands them food. So, yeah. Well, McKenna, tell me a little bit about next steps. So I am going to the University of North Georgia. I'll be um, participating in an ROTC program and hopefully um, enlisting after my four years uh, as, a, as a first lieutenant. And so my goal is to um, like spread the word of God, I guess, by like protecting and helping others. That's, that's a worthy first step or next step yeah. after that. Yeah, how, how long is the process there? So. ROTC is all four years of college. Mm -hmm. It's basically, I don't want to call it a class, but it's like kind of like a class mm -hmm. that you take and you'll go through all your other classes. You'll major in minor in whatever you're going to major in minor in. In my case, I'm majoring in criminal justice. Um, but then you're also taking like, like extracurricular stuff and you know, there's PT in the morning and you have room inspection and it's basically being in the military, but being in college at the same time, which is really, really cool. Yeah. And then after four years, um, you can either graduate as a civilian, which is taking the leadership track, or you can do what I'm planning to do and graduate as a commissioning officer, and you'll go into the Army as a first lieutenant. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. very good. Well, I wish you both the best. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's been a common thread through all the interviews that we've done, I know they've not seen all the interviews, you have seen all the <laughs> interviews, but that small group, and I, I hope that you will mm -hmm. plug in to, to other, another small group where you can deepen your faith and your faith journey. I'm very thankful you all have been a part of the church, and thanks for answering the call to come and, and share. Thank you. This morning you heard from McKenna, you heard from Morgan, two of our seniors here at the church. This is a Senior Sunday, 
And these are folks that have grown up in the church. When you give to the church, you've given to the life and mission of other people. Of other people. When you give to the church, you've made a difference in the lives of others. And I wanted you to hear from them. And that was McKenna and Morgan. So I have a short devotion to go along with Senior Sunday this morning. And it's taken from John chapter 17. John chapter 17 is the longest prayer that we have that Jesus prayed. It's a full chapter. And John 17 verse 20, this is the key verse and this is what it says. Jesus is doing the talking here and he says, I pray for these followers, but I am also praying for all who will believe in me because of their teaching. Pray with me. Jesus, this is transformational. You speak to us through Scripture. You speak to us through the lives of others. And Jesus, may this day be no different. Speak to us and give us ears that we can hear what you say. Amen. It was about 112 years ago, I was in high school. And I, it was Saturday morning, and I was driving into a friend's neighborhood. As I drove into the neighborhood, I saw someone walking on the street. I didn't pay much attention. My attention was to what we were going to do at my friend's house. There were a handful of us that were in a band, and we were going to go down into his basement, and we were going to practice. We did it most Saturdays. And as I was driving in, I unloaded my drums into his basement, and we were playing there for a little bit. And that's when my friend's father opened the, the basement door, and he called down to me. He said, Tom, can you come on up here? Well, I put down my drumsticks, walked upstairs, and there was a fellow standing there. And uh, the fellow said, is that your car? He pointed to my car, and I said, yes, sir. He said, last night you drove your car through my yard and tore up my lawn. I'm calling the police. I said, I didn't do that. He said, yes, you did. I saw it. I can identify your car by the stickers on the back of your car. I said, I didn't do that. He said, then who did? I said, I couldn't tell you that, but I know I didn't do that. And he got red-faced and angry and started calling me everything but a child of God. That's when my friend's father said, if Tom said he didn't do it, he didn't do it and you need to leave. And by the way, I didn't do it. But I want to tell you, it, it's transformation. It's transformation when somebody says, I believe in you. When somebody says, you don't have to prove yourself, your word is good enough for me. When someone says, I believe in you, that, it's transformational. And it was for me. One of the most transformational verses in Scripture is this verse that I read right here. This is the longest prayer we have of Jesus. And Jesus starts off his prayer in verse 17. This is the last night of his life on earth. And he knows that the next day he's going to be crucified. And he's praying that he will glorify God in all that he's got to go through in his crucifixion. But the second thing he prays for is he prays for his 12 disciples. And that's what he repeats. I pray for these followers. But then he moves on to praying for you and for me. He doesn't wait till we've, we've proven ourselves worthy of his prayers. He doesn't wait till we're, we're the, the best we can be that before we're even born Jesus prays for you and for me. He said, I pray for those who will believe in me because of the disciples' teachings. Hebrews chapter 7 goes on from this, says that Jesus is our high priest who is still praying for us. That Jesus didn't just pray for you a long time ago. Yes, he did, but he's praying for you now. That he's pulling for you. That he believes in you. That that's what the Jesus prayer is about. 
And that's what I wanted to talk about shortly this morning. So what does he pray? Well, it tells us that here too. Verse 13 says he prays for our joy. This is what Jesus says. He says, I'm coming to you now, but I pray these things while I'm still in the world so that these followers can ha have all of my joy in them. Jesus isn't praying for just a, a little a sprinkle of joy for you and me. He's not praying for just a, a, a spoonful of joy. He's praying that all of his joy will be in you and me. It's the joy of a clean heart. It's what he did on the cross. He gave his life on the cross to destroy, to kill all those things that would, would, would destroy you and me. All those things that would, would turn us against God and ourselves and one another. And he rose from the grave that he'd live his life through us to, to give in us a, a, cl a clean heart, a renewed spirit. That our joy, that his joy would be made full in us. Us, and we would have his joy. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says rejoice always. That that joy is not something that just here and there and when things are going good. And by the way, Jesus is about to be crucified on the cross. So it's not a, a joy where we're just sitting around the, the campfire and telling jokes. No, this is a joy that's deeper than, than, than a joke or immediate happiness or circumstances. And 1 Thessalonians 5 says that, that that joy, we rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. His will for you and for me isn't just a, a sprinkle or a dash of joy. It's that we rejoice always, that we pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. That's the practice. That's what we do every day. Because his spirit lives through us. Even when the circumstances are not ones we would have chosen. That we rejoice. We rejoice always. That God's speaking to us all day every day. And that we, we talk to him all day every day. We listen to him all day. We, we pray without ceasing every day. And then that in everything we give thanks. That's not for everything that we give thanks. There's some things that are just bad. But that we might ask God that we be transformed by those things and be better able to serve him. And that in everything we, we give thanks. He prays for your joy and mine and he's praying for that joy now, today. But that's not all. Verse 17 says, Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Sanctify them in truth. What in the world does sanctify mean? It means to be set aside. Set aside for a purpose. That we're not just to be like everybody else. That those who serve God are, well, we don't always do the most popular thing. That, you know, telling the truth isn't always the popular thing, especially when we're wrong. That telling the truth isn't always the thing that is the most common thing. That we're not here to be like everybody else. We're set aside for God's purpose. And that is to serve God, not serve ourselves. That is to serve God and his will for, for your life and mine. That's to have the mind of Christ living in and through us. The spirit of Christ living in and through us, alive in us. And to serve neighbor. It's not always the most popular and it's not always the most common, but it's why he rose from the grave. That you and I would be sanctified, set aside for his purpose. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning, that Jesus prayed for you and me, not only a long time ago, but 
today. He's still praying for us and he prays for our joy. He prays that we're sanctified in truth. And the last thing, he prays for our unity. Verse 21, Jesus is praying. He says, Father, I pray that they can be one. As you are in me and I am in you, I pray that they can also be one in us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. In this prayer, Jesus prays that we be one, not once, but four times. Four times he prays that we be one. And he tells us why. Then the world will believe that you sent me. If ever there's anything in this world that is the most natural thing, it's to divide us and them. If there's anything that's the most human thing about us, it's to, to, to try and divide rather than multiply. The most common thing for all of us is to, to, to look out there and try and decide who's sheep and who's goats. But that's not your job and mine to decide who's sheep and who's goats. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, 24 and 25 says, Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near that you and I you and I are are here to be one to build one another up to encourage one another to strengthen one another to be one it's the most Common, most easy, most popular thing in the world to choose us and them, to divide, to do anything but to be one in Jesus Christ. And the only way we can do that is through the power of the risen Christ, alive in you and me, the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, the prayer of Christ. Jesus Christ alive in you and me today. This morning, the message was a short one, but it's transformational. That inside of of you and me, we might have the spirit of Jesus Christ alive, calling us together as, as one. And not only that, that we might be sanctified in truth, set aside for a special purpose to serve him. And that, that you and I, this day and in, in the days to come, that we might know his joy and that joy might be made full. Not just a little sprinkle or just a, a spoonful of joy, but a joy that's, that's full and overflowing. Well, that takes practice. Practice where we rejoice always. Where we pray without ceasing and then in everything we give thanks and I want us to do that right now today pray with me Jesus this day is a day of celebration it may be that ah there are things that are that are screaming at us you have a a hand that's strong enough to quiet those things we might have a to-do list that's calling to us your hand is strong enough to subdue that, that list. That it might be we have worries. That we have anxiousness. But Jesus, your hand is strong enough to quiet an anxious heart. And in its place bring joy. Use this service this day. That always we may rejoice. And that we might turn to you and pray without ceasing. I know you talk to us all day long. Help us to listen and have a disciplined dedication to paying attention to you. And I also know that in everything we might give thanks. Yes, I'm thankful for the ministry of this church. I'm thankful for people who give generously to this church to change the lives of others. Not just that they might receive, but that the world might be transformed by your prayer, through your presence, and through your spirit. 
It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image, and what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our, when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to Him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.